from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 16th, 2021. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett met yesterday with U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas-Greenfield during her very first visit to Israel. Before sitting down for their meeting, the two addressed a press conference where Bennett told the ambassador he hoped she would experience the real Israel while in the country and get to know the Israeli people. Also thanking her for her support at the United Nations. There is such a stark contrast between the reality on ground here and what one might hear in the corridors of the United Nations. And uh, I want to thank you for representing a, a voice of decency and reason in an institution that I think we can both objectively say it's uh, pretty biased in, in terms of its treatment with, uh, of Israel. Thomas Greenfield spoke of the U.S.-Israel relationship and the Abraham Accords in her remarks. Our countries share a strong common agenda at the U.N. and across the globe, from fighting COVID-19 to expanding democracy to strengthening Israel's ties with its Arab neighbors, Muslim-majority countries, and other nations. She also reiterated the U.S. administration's support for a two-state solution with the Palestinians. And she thanked Bennett and the Israeli people for welcoming her so warmly. I've spent about 12 hours, less than 12 hours on the ground so far, and I have to tell you it's been an extraordinary visit. And I have so much appreciated all of the hospitality of Israel that Israel has shown me so far, and I look forward to our meeting and our discussion. Thomas Greenfield also met yesterday with Israel's Foreign Minister Yair Lapid, Transportation Minister Meirav Michaeli, and Defense Minister Benny Gantz at the Knesset later visiting Israel's memorial to the Holocaust, Yad Vashem. Today, the ambassador was accompanied by senior IDF officials on a tour of Israel's borders, including in the north with Lebanon, where she was briefed, the IDF said, on Iran's nuclear capabilities and its export of global terrorism. She then viewed a Hezbollah terrorist tunnel. Also touring the Kerem Shalom crossing at the Gaza border, where humanitarian goods are delivered to Gazan civilians. And Thomas Greenfield got a close look at the Iron Dome and David's sling systems, which she said our nations developed together to save the lives of innocent civilians. She tweeted, we will replenish the Iron Dome system and support Israel's ability to defend itself. Israel's new ambassador to the United States is now in Washington. Israel's embassy in the U.S. shared the news, tweeting, We are honored and privileged to announce that Ambassador Michael Herzog landed in Washington, D.C. on Friday and assumed his position as ambassador of Israel to the U.S.A. Michael Herzog is the brother of Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, and the son of former Israeli president, the late Chaim Herzog. He replaces outgoing Ambassador Gilad Erdan, who wrote on Friday, I will continue fighting on Israel's behalf in my role as ambassador to the UN to ensure that the world's only Jewish state is treated fairly in the international arena. Well, a first-of-its-kind interfaith delegation from Israel gathered yesterday at the country's pavilion at the Dubai Expo in the United Arab Emirates for Tolerance Week. The Emirates News Agency reported that the delegation's leaders representing five major religions, Jews, Muslims, Christians, Druze, and Baha'i, shared their ideas on how to promote peace, coexistence, and inter-religious dialogue at the event. The delegation members included Baha'i community leader David Rutstein, Archbishop Amer Giuseppe Mata, Druze community leader Sheikh Muafak Tarif, Muslim leader Imam Jamal Ubra, and Rabbi Dr. Benny Lau. The Dubai Expo, which opened last month, continues through March of next year.
Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, November the 16th at 7 o'clock, Tal Keenan discusses his concerns for the future of Judaism with Gary Rosenblatt. At 8, award-winning producer and journalist covering Palestinian affairs for the Jerusalem Post, Khalid Abu Tome offers a first-hand perspective of the stumbling blocks that deny a better future for Palestinians and Israelis alike. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Yossi Balin on L'Chaim. At 10.30, Eli Kohanim speaks with Dr. Rashid Ali al Nuami, one of the brokers of the Abraham Accords. And coming up next, it's the ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 16th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.